Hi, everyone. I'm Katherine Whitaker Stopp, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services in the Manhattan Beach Unified School District. In this presentation, I'm going to introduce you to two main types of assessments, provide you with some examples of assessment, and finally ask for some support. There are two types of assessment that we use, assessments of learning and assessments for learning. What's the difference? It's a matter of function and purpose and a matter of who. Let's unpack this slide a little bit more. Assessments of learning are commonly called summative assessments. Here are some examples, and they are a way to see what students can do. Summative assessments provide an essential benchmark to check the progress of students, institutions, and educational programs of a county as a whole. Among other things, summative assessment results are often used for grades, programs, and school admissions. Assessments for learning referred to as formative assessments, are a way to see what the teacher should do. Here are examples. Formative assessments are more diagnostic than evaluative. They're used to monitor pupil learning style and ability, to provide ongoing feedback, and to allow educators to improve and adjust their teaching methods to improve student learning. You might think that some of these assessments could be either summative or formative. You're right, it depends on how we use the results. Here's an example of a formative assessments that our students may take. Renaissance star assessments are short tests that provide teachers with learning data. What do the teachers do with this data? They analyze it to learn what students already know and what they are ready to learn next to monitor student growth and to determine which students may need additional help. These assessments in both math and reading are heavily researched and scientifically proven to help teachers guide each student on his or her unique path to mastery. Again, teachers use these assessments to see what concept the student already knows and which ones they're ready to learn next. So now we are in distance learning. And this is a true story. The TV was on in the background while I was creating this presentation, and this advertisement grabbed my attention. It said, for now, we are all living a new normal. Businesses are closing. Living rooms are now offices and schools. Our world is suddenly different, but one thing stays the same. We value data to inform our instruction. It actually didn't say that. It said, State Farm is there, but it served my purpose, so I'm going with that. So we're asking for your support. Help us to gather data to inform our instruction. Help us to understand what our students know and are able to do so that we can provide next year's teachers the opportunity to look for patterns in baseline data for planning instruction. Help us to help our students. What can you do at home? Help them find a quiet space free from distractions. Encourage them to work independently and with integrity so that it is an authentic reflection of what they know and can do. And remind your child to always do their best that even though he or she doesn't receive a grade on a formative assessment, all data is taken into consideration when trying to gain a holistic picture of a student and a learner. The great John Wooden said, just do the best you can. No one can do more than that. And finally, thank you so much for your partnership during this time. I hope you are all safe and well at home. Bye-bye.